Yeah, so what we have here is uh, a field plot on the kind of studies we're working on in Asraham. Now, on the extreme left hand side, this is part of what we call the planting date study. We're trying to figure out when is the first time to plant. No, these were, these were just normal beds, no, no rice beds in this school. So, this was planted in June, mid-June, but the earliest planting in April 15 is over the other side. And those plants are more robust and bigger than the mobile. So, what's the average height? Well, as you see, these varieties over here are the same varieties over there. Okay. What has happened is because these were planted late, okay. they kind of switch to reproductive when they are still shorter. But yeah, seed varieties up to five feet, six, five, four feet. But the five varieties can go up to seven feet tall. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, evident from that one there. Okay. That's the fiber type. So you could only get one crop per year here? Is that what y'all are saying? That's what we're shooting for, but uh, because again the, 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 the germination of the plant depends on whether you have rain or something like that, that can affect that. But you can potentially produce so because uh, for the, the fiber, you need two on that month. So that means you can plant a lead crop, but you will run into problems of water. And, so I know they were saying time. you could get three crops, but what I'm hearing is just really you can't do that. Probably from an economic standpoint, you might do with one, but you can always try again. If you have sufficient uh, rainfall, you might get an idea. Okay. Yeah. It depends on how well you plan in, in spring too. If you plant early, that means you can harvest and still have time to, to plant. Mm -hmm. That's another thing you could probably at least look at at some point. Is you got a process of just supposed to allow the North Carolina, why can't we just go and sell it to some of that? Right. We got one just right here, why can't they sell it here? And basically, it creates more competition where you got two different places possible to take. Yeah. We had a North Carolina farmer who was interested in partnering with us and helping, helping our research along. We can't work with him because it's across state lines. Right. That's another step, but. Yeah. So, <laughs> have they tested on different types of soil at all? Like, we have no idea. It's probably why this is doing better than this here. This is a little soil. What kind of soil does that have like? Sandy loam. Okay. Well drained. Likes a lot of moisture to pop out. Okay. Adequate moisture across the growing season. Uh, doesn't like keeping its feet wet. Doesn't like, a, doesn't like heavy clay. That's perfect soil for that. Mm -hmm. And that's my concern with the way I'm talking about this is going to fix the tobacco farmer situation. A lot of tobacco farmers I know grow in real heavy clay, red clay. And, you know, some also grow in the areas that enrich it up, bed it up, and just to get it higher, if you will, so you can get some moisture. He was talking about do the same with this kind of trading two meters down. It's not going to do that red clay. No. When colonists settled here, they were required by the crown to grow certain crops. Tobacco was one, hemp was one. That was a condition of being a colonist that had to supply that material back to the crown. And we can't test like the Craig's seed that he's got that he's, you know. We're not allowed to bring it across the state lines. <laughs> you can bring it across the world. <laughs> I can import it. But <laughs> not across state lines. I can bring it in from other countries. I can bring it in from Europe. And part of the problem there is um, because you're importing a Schedule One controlled substance, we have to have DEA import permits. There's a lot of paperwork involved in that. You have to be licensed and registered with the DEA to handle the Schedule One controlled substance. <laughs> In addition to the state license, I have the DEA license and registration. Then I have to do the permits. Um, I can't get the permit until I get my license. And when you get the permits, they're issued in a duplicate. I have to send the permit over to the other country so that a copy of the permit can accompany the seeds back. When they finally get it to the United States, it sits in customs for weeks on the end before they release it. So, um, just the bureaucracy involved in this right now is so horrendous. I've never seen any crop 
where you've had so much paperwork and such a length of time involved in getting your seed in hand to plant this. So, yeah, we need domestic suppliers. We need to be able to move across the lines. And, and if, this, if this current bill passes, hopefully a lot of that will be some of this will go away. And are there other varieties or cultivars that you could get your hands on that you know might work well in Virginia so this is so well that's part of what uh, this is. Virginia Tech and Virginia State are doing is they're looking at these different cultivars and you can see there are differences among them um, we want to know how do they grow what are they producing and some are oil seed cultivars some are fiber cultivars some are dual purpose cultivars in addition to that the other consideration we have is Hemp, wild hemp, is a dioecious species. It has seed producing individuals and pollen producing individuals. They are trying to breed them to make them more monoecious species where you have hermaphroditic plants that will produce both pollen and seed. That's ideal because if you're trying to grow an oil seed crop, you want every plant in the field producing seed for you, uh, not, just, uh, not just some pollen producing plants. So as you can see walking around here, some cultivars are much more dioecious in nature than other cultivars. So that's, then you have to take that into account in terms of uh, planting density, because if you end up with a lot of males in there, they're going to pollinate and die off. That's not going to give you anything in terms of fire force.